हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ नॉर्मलाइजेशन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम गेट 2013 सो एज वी ऑल नो दैट बिफोर फाइंडिंग आउट द हाईएस्ट नॉर्मल फॉर्म ऑफ अ टेबल द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू फाइंड आउट द कैंडिडेट कीज राइट सो इट विल बी अ रिविजन ऑफ बोथ द कॉन्सेप्ट फर्स्ट हाउ टू फाइंड द कैंडिडेट की एंड द नेक्स्ट हाउ टू फाइंड द हाइएस्ट नॉर्मल फॉर्म ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर रिलेशनल स्कीमा सो लेट्स सी वॉट द क्वेश्चन सेज द क्वेश्चन सेज रिलेशन आर has eight attributes a b c d e f g h fields of r contain only atomic values now what does this mean this means that the relational schema is in 1 and f so because in 1 and f the only requirement is that the value should be atomic you should not contain any multi valued attribute right so uh, it says that the fields contain only atomic values okay so then we have the functional dependency set over here so these are the functional dependencies given to us so now this is a linked question so the first question in the linked question is how many candidate keys does the relational r have how many candidate keys does the relation r have so first we need to find out the candidate keys so you know the concept uh, behind finding a candidate key we need to find out the closures of the attributes and then check that which of the closures contain all the attributes given in this relational schema and the one which contains all the attributes is the candidate key now since there can be multiple candidate keys we find out all the possible candidate keys for a particular relational schema so let's start with this i start with a attribute i start with a closure so when i find a closure i get a Which is a trivial dependency A to A, right? And then from A to B C, I get B and C. Now, B is further inferring C F and H. So from B, I get C F and H. And from F, I get E and G. And from H, there is no other dependency. So that's all for this. So, but If we count the attributes, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven attributes, but we require eight. So which one is missing? H is missing. So we do not have H over here. To get H, what we'll have to do? Sorry, H is there. We do not have D over here. So to get D, what we can do is we can concatenate D over here. So A D becomes our candidate key for this case. because ad closure will contain all the eight attributes so ad is one of the candidate keys next we start finding for other possibilities of uh, other possibilities of candidate keys so as you all know we had discussed a shortcut method to find out like if we have one of the candidate keys then in order to find out the other possible candidate keys what is the shortcut just see that if there is any attribute which is reaching to this attribute you can also say if there is any attribute so i say that uh let's say i know that uh, ad is a ad is a candidate key over here so if there is some attribute x over here from which i can reach ad then x Also becomes a candidate key. Now, why is it so? Because X closure will contain A D, and A D contains all the possible attributes. Therefore, X will also be a candidate key, right? So, similarly, we just observe these uh, functional dependencies. If we just uh, see them carefully, we get that E to the A, E to A is also one of such cases because If I just concatenate D on both the sides, this becomes the similar case. So just to verify this thing which I've just said, we can find out E D closure, right? So I find out E closure first, and what do I get? E to A is already a dependency over here, right? And then from A, I have all the attributes which were in a closure and i'm only left with d so i just concatenate d over here so ed or de becomes another candidate key 
So similarly, I look for some other possibilities, other such possibilities in this functional dependency set, right? And now if you uh, see this one, what is this? This is basically a representation of um, two functional dependencies combined together because this can also be said as if I just split the right hand side, if I just apply the splitting property on the right hand side, I would get f to e and then f to g, right? This can be split into f to e and f to g. Now remember that this f to e and f to g was only possible because of the splitting property uh, and splitting property can only be applied on the right hand side of any functional dependency. You cannot apply the splitting property on the left hand side like you cannot apply it over here. Now why is it so? Because this says that they combinedly are able to reach to here and this says f can reach both e and g, right? So therefore we can split only the right hand side. Because over here, if I say C determines G, it would be false because C and H are combinedly able to determine G, right? Okay. So from here, we have FD as another candidate key. And similarly, we have B to C, F, H in our functional dependency set, which means B to C, B to F, B to H. And from B to F, I get to know that B can also be another candidate key only if I concatenate B over here. So similarly, BD becomes another candidate key. And after that, I do not have any other such possibility. So that means we have in total 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we have 4 candidate keys with us. So the answer is B part 4. So that's all for this session of... Uh, normalization and candidate gate questions so i'll discuss the next link question in the next uh, video which is in finding the highest normal form so stay tuned and happy learning